Okay, this is a video about hydrogen. I'm going to try to speak fairly quickly. I had this wonderful class where uh, somebody named Jazz helped explain things. Somebody named Mario helped explain things. Somebody named Sam explained gas price, gas prices. Uh, somebody named Gil Nas explained, explained Middle Eastern projects. It was fantastic. It was fantastic. I have a tape recording of it. What I'm going to do here is explain kind of what we went through. And most importantly, I'm just trying to quantify things. And I'm going to go through some slides. And I'm really kind of upset because I just did this whole thing and I didn't turn the stupid sound on the video properly. We're going to go through some levelized cost and we're going to explain. And this is, I've had an opposite experience where I've wasted incredible amounts of time with people, it was with one person at least said, oh no, I need a project finance model. Levelized costs don't work. Level, you have levelized costs and a project finance model are gonna give you exactly the same result. We gotta do levelized costs correctly with PMT formulas on a real basis. And then we can, if we really look all the way from the top to the bottom and we understand electricity, we understand storage, we understand transportation, we can get some real answers. We understand, different strategies. We understand emissions. Okay, here, oh, this sucks so bad. I watch videos, I, I read these these reports, and, and in these uh, reports, they always give you some beautiful numbers. McKinsey says the price is going to be X, Y, Z. Oh, show me the data. Show me how you do it. Give me the spreadsheet. That's what I'm going to do. And we're going to get some real answers in a few minutes here. And we're going to go through what the cost of a steam methane uh, reactor is from, with natural gas, with emissions, without emissions, with blue, with gray. We're going to go through electrolysis, uh, electrolysis and pretend we buy electricity from the natural gas. And if anybody knows anything about electricity in markets, they know natural gas drives electricity prices. If you didn't know that before, you know that after the... Uh, uh, Ukraine thing, uh, war, <laughs> war. The the uh, uh, the the uh, proof of love, love, get me so. If we assume that we run the electrolyzer at low capacity utilization factors and extend the life of the stack because it depends on hours, not time, and we get much cheaper electricity, we get things a lot more interesting. And, we, and, and then we're going to go through the cost of storage, and we're going to understand something obvious. Storage depends on how long you store things for. If you've got a warehouse and a box, if you store that box for a long time, a year, you're going to have to get a much bigger warehouse to store all your boxes for a year. If you store it for a day, you need a really small warehouse. We're going to go through distribution and understand that distribution depends on how far you drive. Duh! And how fast you drive, because that depends, that's going to drive the number of trucks you have or whatever. If it's not trucks, we'll use trucks. We're going to go through dispensing and see that dispensing depends on how fast you dispense the stuff and how, if you can dispense it continually, or you have to sit there and have one dispenser for one truck. What an idiotic thing that would be. Then we're going to go through what the total cost of a car, hydrogen vehicle is, whether it's a large vehicle or a small vehicle and see that there's so much BS in this, it's unbelievable. And finally, the most realistic thing perhaps is, what happens if we make ammonia where we have a lot of sunlight and wind and and we can transport that ammonia and do it on, on a green basis? Can that work with different natural gas prices, with really high, high gas prices? You know, solar was kind of the same thing. We had to find the costs. We had to do some background. We're, we, please, Please, please don't get your mind out of solar and wind. Get your mind out of the fact that you have to have a high capacity factor to make it work. Put your mind in natural gas where you have to have a good heat rate. You have to have a good efficiency to make it work. That's what it's much more like. And when we have all sorts of challenges, data is all over the place on this stuff because it's at an early stage and these are pilot uh, uh, programs and everything else. So, you know, there's so many, so, so much uh, uh, crap, you know, how much is the real cost of a fuel cell, an electrolyzer, 
what's the cost? What, why do we get such different answers in, 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 in costs? What, how many hours will a, 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 a fuel cell run for? How much is the carbon capture on the SMR? There's so many questions. Here's my, I went to Gatwick because I got lost. I was supposed to go to Heathrow and then Gatwick, whatever. You don't care about that. But I, I, I found a petrol station. They had hydrogen for 12 pounds. Lazard, of course, without all the distribution costs, says it's somewhere on this. Siemens says it can be one and a half per kilogram USD. This is pounds. Is this difference uh, uh, from storage and, 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 and distribution? Or is it just that these people are trying to capture all their research and development costs up front? Why is it so big? Look, look at this difference in the, here's this, uh, God, I hated this study from Deloitte. Sorry, Deloitte, you're nice people. But why there was no there was no basis for any of this, and they had a cost of a fuel cell of one thousand two hundred. Other people say a fuel cell is forty six to seventy six per kilowatt. If you make your analysis without doing interesting strategies, hydrogen is not going to look very good. If you if you buy electricity from the grid, if you if you uh, 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 transport over long distances if you store for long periods it's not going to look good we have to do something more interesting and this is this kind of diagram i had to add some things to this diagram so if we produce hydrogen and have no electricity distribution cost if we have no hydrogen distribution costs and we put our little dispenser here and our little toyota mirai or whatever it's called here and then we uh, uh, make our ammonia right next to it and then put it near the coast so there's not any any distribution costs and we can get our our, our offshore or and our onshore wind and do all our storage right here that then you have something really more interesting that illustrates the strategy is Liverpool the same kind of thing so we're going to model alternative strategies I want to make a couple of points up front people who say oh renewable energy is some kind of scarce resource and we can't use it for hydrogen what bullshit it's 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 a wasted resource when we have excess solar here's Australia when we have excess solar here's the one of the sad things really sad things about life is that the Nord Pool now charges you 600 uh, euros at least for to, to get their data it was so good it showed you okay here was wind and, and electricity prices expressed as implied heat rate uh, uh, natural gas versus electricity and we can see that when the wind goes up the price goes down this is just for uh, one uh, week or something like that and you could do this and so so we are going to take advantage of these low electricity prices and get in in the renewable energy analysis okay and so i i have the rec regular introduction with the chemistry here's the here's the the smr the electrolyzer and this fuel cell which is the opposite i'm not going through any of these the components we can go through cost by cost there's the final mobility here's the uh, uh, more stuff okay here we're gonna do the levelized cost and i'm gonna start with blue versus gray versus green hydrogen standard stuff okay and we're gonna go through some data and show you some of the key things the most fundamental thing to do is get different strategies and get different costs we're gonna go through all of the these things we need to understand that using a pmt function and i'm going to have to do this in a separate video i've done this elsewhere on my web website you can get all the templates and find it but we need real cost not escalated cost we're not going to put some absurd high cost of capital in the real cost of capital even today is low and might go up of course uh, uh, uh it, we're going to we can't compare a nominal cost over a long life obviously i've said that too too many times uh, uh and, and they i give you a calculator and all you got to do is throw these things into the calculator it counts for degradation different lives different stack lives degradation of the of the input not the output uh, inflation taxes and everything else okay enough 
All right, here's the next thing you need to know. These people, engineers, they go crazy. I'm sorry, I'm not an engineer, I'm not anything. But we need to know how many MMBTUs will make a kilogram because we're expressing our price in USD per kilogram just because everybody does it. And we express the gas price in USD per MMBTU. When we get to electricity and electrolyzer, we express the, the electricity price in USD per megawatt hour, kilowatt hour. And we, again, want kilowatt. We need these efficiencies. And that accounts for most of the analysis. The capital costs are much less important, especially when you understand that you have to spread the, the, the electrolyzer cost over the stack life and all that. Okay? And then we need, when we get our, our capital cost, we need to do kind of understand the expressions, how we convert some of these things. Uh, we're we're going to do this, but I'm going to come back to this later. But if it, here, here's the kind of problem. If you both, have, if you start from the same place, the same electricity, which you never would do, uh, and then you have to put it through electrolyzer, and let's say we use 50 kilowatt hours to get a kilogram, and then our fuel cell is going to work by using 8.8 .8 kilograms for 100 kilometers or 0 .08, 008 kilograms for one kilometer. We multiply the, these together and we get it expressed in kilowatt hours per kilogram. And this is where we, you hear that the efficiency is so much worse of the electrolyzer. But don't worry about this. You've got to account for the cost of this. You've got to account for how this, the storage cost in this versus the storage cost in a ca cask. You've got to account for the fact that you're never going to be able to buy electricity or hardly ever straight from the solar for the battery. And you can for the electrolyzer. And you get a very, very, very different answer. Just, and then this is the kind of stuff that irritates me. Oh, Deloitte says, here's the cost of a bus and all that. Without any backup, without any deep analysis, without any Excel spreadsheets. So that's this. And here people say, okay, this is gray, blue, green, and this is supposed to cost more. We're going to do some critical analysis on that with different strategies. By the way, IEA has very different numbers. We're going to give you the answers and we're going to go through it slowly. We're going to start with the SMR. And when we get to the SMR, I'm going to show you where the source data is. Unlike the, the JASH is so good and the other, uh, so other people are so bad, they don't tell you. Show me the source. Don't just put something in. The IEA is a, is a good kind of source. There's a Norwegian study by a student and also Pretty good. So we're going to do this. We're going to understand one thing, that 33 kilowatt hours in terms of just energy value of hydrogen is the same as one kilogram. We're going to use that over and over and over again. As soon as we use that, we can go through things because here's the IEA. It says it's 76 percent. If we want to then understand how to take this 76 percent for a, a, a uh, 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 gray hydrogen and worse, 69 for a blue hydrogen. We're going to trust these numbers and then they give you the, the drivers. And anytime you do levelized cost, you need the production, the volumes, you need the capital cost, you need the operating cost. The operating cost is the big one and that consists of natural gas or electricity. And for that, you need the efficiencies. And you, you can work through these efficiencies and then just divide it out. And it's really simple. You get somewhere around these kind of numbers for gray and blue. We'll use 0.15 or 0.16. And then you can just multiply. So if the gas price is 10, you multiply 0.15 times 10 and you get uh, 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 1.5 as the cost per kilogram. If it's uh, 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 blue, you get 1.7, that's 6.5. That's what you do. And then you can compare that to electricity. Okay. And that's the biggest cost. And you don't get tied up with your project finance, IRRs, taxes, de degradation, which we will do, of course, anyway. And here's some examples where I just went through the different estimates in the Norway estimate. And we get these efficiencies. 
And once you get these efficiencies, you can do things like, here's the, what if the price of electricity is here and the efficiency of the electricity is here? Here's the cost per kilogram for just the uh, production. And we can do the same thing for natural gas. Here's the efficiency. I use 0.15. And we can say, well, if we got 10, 10 what, 9.5, that's 1.43. If we could get 25 in electricity, we can do it for less. And then you got to, you can put the cost per ton. You can convert the, which we're going to do in a minute. We're going to convert the cost per ton and get the kind of final result, whatever. And then we'll go through some capital costs. And you notice that they have the CapEx they put per KWH2, which for electricity, KWE. And we got to understand that's per output, not input. Oh my God, just to get these things worked out and to be able to multiply by 33.33 and just work through the efficiencies, that is the big deal. Then I got some. Other, I have some other uh, estimates. Then we have the O and M cost. And then let's get to the controversy about blue hydrogen, whether it's all a sham, the big lie, whether it's the big lie or whether it, whether uh, it, it's it's like Shell says a transition thing, okay. And here's some uh, uh, stuff on it, and I'm not going to go through. Mr. Blah blah blah. Mr. Robert Horworth from Cornell says it's all BS. This blue hydrogen, okay. And he said we can't get 90% capture. We can only get 48% capture. Maybe he's right. Who knows? And then we get the uh, uh, different emission estimates here. Uh, uh, kg per 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 uh, kilowatt hour okay and then we can get also when and now we can get a little more interesting we have the emissions for the uh, 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 electricity and let's show you some of the stuff i'm gonna do now now i'm gonna switch to a couple of excel files and the first excel file i have is this one i've been blabbing about but i'm i'm not embarrassed about blabbing about this and that's where we go through. Oh, this is the, the, the cost of the cars, excuse me. This is uh, uh, the SMRs. So in each of these, I go through some inputs, some, some production inputs, and we operate the SMR at a high utilization, some capital cost inputs, some uh, uh, efficiency at inputs, and some other O&M inputs. And you can see I put the blue high blue, blah, 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 blah. And then we put it through our calculator and we have a bunch of PMT calculations. Of, what was it? Here's a PMT one, a tax depreciation, a PMT. And we press it in real cost and you look at other videos and you prove that this gives you exactly, exactly, exactly the same as a big project finance model. And then I kind of summarize our costs up here on the top. And then we can do all kind of fancy little sensitivity analysis and finally summarize where we are. Now, we did the same thing for electrolysis. And if I assume that the this is the kind of current electrolysis price, and if I assume that, and this is the aspirational price, and if we assume we do something silly in electrolysis, which is buying natural gas from the grid, at the equivalent natural gas price, then basically no matter what kind of gas price we use and whether we include emissions or not include emissions, so one, th this one we click it on and off to not include emissions. My friend, I hope he's my friend Josh, he is brilliant, really brilliant. And he tells me, I can't give you his last name and everything else because he might sue me or something. Uh, uh, he says, he says, it's about presentation. It's about putting things together. It's about putting the puzzle pieces together, having a good little LCOE calculator, and then make a presentation. So we can see we're kind of out of it. Now, if we don't, if we divorce the electricity price from the gas price, then we can kind of put this up and down and see what kind of break-even gas price we need to get this to work. And then we can do the same sort of thing. So if I I can do this with or without emissions price uh, 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 costs, and that's what we really want to do. Okay, and I'm going to go through 
another video to get that. Now, in addition to that, I, I have a, a, a little exercise file, an exercise file. And here I go through the cost of storage, uh, transport, dispensing, blah, 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 blah. But let's just go through this interesting one about the, the emissions. So if, if, if we have a kilogram, uh, I think there are a thousand tons in a kilogram. So I'm going to divide this by a thousand. I'm going to pretend that we have a 30 USD cost for emissions. That's not even important. The cost be in terms of tons of natural gas per uh, gigawatt hour is 499. So the first thing we can do is we can say, and then I've got the uh, efficiency for the, 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 the electrolyzer and we say we produce 100 of hydrogen per day. If we produce 100 of hydrogen per day, then we can multiply that by 365 if it's not a leap year, and then we can multiply by 53 to get how much we need. And then I divided that by a million to get from gigawatt kilowatt hours to gigawatt hours and multiplied it by our 499. So if we were stupid enough to use our electrolysis, uh, I guess I can move, uh, uh, multiply this by the cost, which is not, not very interesting. If we were going to do that, that's how much we would uh, use. Now, if we we're using gray hydrogen and we believe the IEA stuff, we have our per day, we multiply that by 365 to get the year, and then we can multiply this by our uh, uh, emission. Uh, 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 this should be tons per kg now. Sorry about that. And then we get, uh, uh, just a minute, just a minute, uh, 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 hang on. This is K, uh, 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 and this is how much we produce per ton. I'm going to, I'm trying to go fast, so I'm going to just go back. I, I, I think I didn't multiply by the, the, the I, I did something wrong. We, but the, we, we end up having more emissions from our electrolysis that uses natural gas than we would for the gray hydrogen. So that we need to use renewable energy to, to make this interesting. And then for the blue hydrogen, it seems to be a heck of a lot less. And if we go all the way back to how much we would use if blue hydrogen really worked, we, we, we'd use a lot less height. <coughs> we'd have a lot less emissions from a car than from plugging our car in at nighttime when the sun doesn't shine. Maybe you got a little wind. Uh, 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 there and now we put it together with different gas prices. I've already showed you this. We put different cost of debt, equity, all of that in, and get our answers. Okay, and this is the big one, I think, where you can put different things in and really compare it. Now we'll move to the electrolyzer for the ele oh, I gotta take a breather. Electrolyzer. So you know, this life is so depressing right now. Oh, God. You know, I, I, I went to my granddaughter. I have a granddaughter. That's how old I am. I went to her sporting thing, and there was a, you know, there's war, there's inflation, there's there's environmental problems. There are, are environmental problems. What else? Uh, guns. I went to this thing that said blue, black guns matter They're on the bumper sticker of the car. Unbelievable. Here. And where I, I, I got off track, the uh, 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 the the electrolyzers. We're going to ignore these things. This is from one of the Middle East kind of studies, I, I guess. It's very crude, but they have a 650 USD per kW, so that's a big one. They say, well, somewhere they say, what's the 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 stack? And do they say the stack percentage? Maybe they don't have the stack percentage here, but part of the 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 project will last for eighty-five thousand hours, and then if we operate it only one hour in the year, we'll we'll have it for a really long time. If we operate it eight seven sixty hours, we'll have about ten years of life. And but the system life is twenty, so we got to reflect the different life of that, and that's what we can do with our LCOE analysis. They give you a dramatically different, a, a, a high range in efficiency, and we just take this 55 divided by 
a 33 rather divided by 55 and then you, you you get this or this or it's backwards like that and blah 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 okay and then that uh, I, Irina, arena i went to their saw their office in, in, in abu dhabi okay they say the cost is going to go down to 200 and the efficiency is going to go down to 45 so it's, if that happens uh, uh, this, this would be really good. Now, what you can do is, and they give you this big range again, almost the same sort of thing. But if we multiply the efficiency times the cost of electricity, this is the big cost. And if we have a difference of efficiency, that's a dramatic thing. Okay. And then the big thing, another big thing is if we're going to put these little electrolyzers next to our solar projects and next to our dispensers and all that, so we don't have to spend much on the distribution. It, we, it would work if there are less economies of scale. Lazard, in their wisdom, says, well, we've got these big economies of scale. And then people like Bloomberg, I saw this lady on Bloomberg on a video, oh, oh the economies of scale. Other people say, no, it's, it's, it's a, a modular process, and there are going to be much less economies of scale. NREL says, Here's the big and small and big and small. They have a much smaller number. And here are some, re some, some kind of real data I've got on a couple of projects. Here's Lazard. And then we put the O&M cost in. And then we move to the electricity price. And we want to divorce the electricity price from the natural gas price. Sorry for using the name divorce. Okay. And we, if we can do it, then... You know, here's where we want to do it. We want to do it where the uh, solar price down here is 20. This is from Bloomberg. Uh, another thing says the solar costs are much less even with all of these things. If we can get anything like that, oh, man, would that be good. And then we have to get a good, see what kind of utilization we can get with this. And it probably works better with wind, except if you're in the Middle East, you know, uh, 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 because the wind goes is 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 not as just seasonal we can't store the hydrogen in the in the summer and, and and disperse it in the winter really that would be too expensive if we can do it with wind we also get extremely low costs and that's what we can use now with our little spinner boxes or we can do this where they kind of put a billion but the billion includes the 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 cost of the ammonia ammonia is NH3 hydrogen it co it includes the offshore and the, the onshore wind and capacity 58 that's a 66 percent capacity factor that would really be pretty good if you can get that that would be enormous if you can do something like that that's like in our diagram then you can make it work here's where I put all the costs together. And then we've got variations in the efficiency, variations in how much of the cost is stack, what the lifetime of the hours are. And then we kind of have to divide the stack versus non-stack. And when I tried to explain it, it was impossible. Please, it's not that hard. You just multiply the total cost by 45% or 50% or whatever you think the stack percentage is. And then you put a different life in. And then you add them back together and you put all the... Uh, assumptions about the inflation rate and all that in and that's all in this file and unlike all the rest of these people not only the videos but the the the, the studies of mckinsey or whoever i'm going to give you all these and you can mess around with it you can critically evaluate it you can tell me i'm full of crap you can include the emissions costs or not include the emissions cost and kind of see what the analysis is you can say well gas is directly related to the input or not directly to related to the input and you can see well if you get this arena aspirational kind of numbers what you're going to get and you don't have to sit here and worry about if every last decimal is right for each one of these scenarios okay and it all works again with this levelized cost calculator okay and then we can uh, uh now let's move to the downstream cost and the big deal here is there's a study from argonne national laboratory who i i, I used to work with them and they're wonderful people but you know <laughs> they don't tell you okay if we're going to store the they have pictures everybody has pictures if we're going to store the hydrogen Here's what it's driven by, how long you got to store it for. 
and you've got to figure out how much you're going to pay as a fixed cost for storage and then spread that fixed cost for storage. If you're going to store it for one hour, you need one box or one cask. If you're going to store it for one week, we need a month, many more casks because we're going to put it in and store it and take it out. Uh, uh, and then it depends on that, the cost of the stacks versus the uh, 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 amount of production. And it's not that hard to do. Here's a diagram. Just think of a warehouse where you've got boxes, but think of these as casks of, of hydrogen, and we have more casks. And it's pretty obvious to me that a cask is going to cost a lot less than some storing in a lithium battery. It's pretty obvious. Okay, it's still expensive, and then we can get our cost, take our different estimates, and this here, the cascade, whatever the heck that is, we divide that by the 138 and get a cost of per kilogram. It's not per kilogram of hydrogen produced, obviously. It's per kilogram as a fixed cost of the storage tank. And then you run through it, and in this case, I had a week of storage, which is a lot. Uh, uh, and then you, you, you uh, 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 pay this fixed uh, price, I say you produce 20 per hour, which is 175 per year, and then you put your life and your your required return. This has got to be a real cost of capital, and then you use your other levelized cost formula, and or you could put it in my little uh, tool, which I haven't bothered to do. And then in this case, the cost of storage would be 1.67, which would be a big adder. That would be a big adder. But remember. 168 hours is a lot. So you can do it if you only had to store it for 12 hours, it's almost nothing. If you have to store it for 48 hours, here it is. And this is the cost versus the amount. And all you do is use these the levelized cost formula and get it. And then when you really would do this carefully, you would understand that there's some variability in demand, just like anything else you're storing. There's some variability in supply driven by solar or wind or whatever. And then you'd have to do maybe even a Monte Carlo simulation. Oh, that would be fun. And we could see how much we really need to store. It depends on how we're using it and how, how, how the production works. And then we got the distribution. It's the same kind of thing. These people who do these studies, they don't say, okay, it depends on two things. It depends on how much, three things or four. It depends on how much this truck costs in this trailer. Okay, it depends on how much diesel you use if you're not going to make it hydrogen. It depends on how fast you're going to go because if you're going to go faster, you'd need less trucks, don't you? You need less trucks if you go faster. And nobody says, here's the assumed speed we have. And the second thing, it's how far you are away. So if you're in Canterbury or someplace in England on the, 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 that's the east coast there and you're transporting to London. We had a case like that. How many kilometers you have to drive there and then you have to drive it empty back. It depends on the distance and the speed and the cost of the truck. And we go through the IEA study and the other one. So again, I've, what I've done here is, <laughs> is given you in this uh, file, Call, it's called revised exercise, but I've given you a little storage exercise. I've given you filled in and uh, 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 the transport exercise where you put the cost in. You see what the cost of the trailer is. You see the distance and the speed. If we could make it only 20 kilometers, so it's really close, and we could go for pretty fast, our cost would be a whole lot less uh, than otherwise. And you have to consider the the cost of the man the person who's driving the truck could be anybody and, and, and what, whatever okay so that's that and it, but if you try to do this analysis and just pick some numbers out without understanding what the drivers are how silly would that be so i have this and then i if if we have a very short distance and we have a high, high speed we can get the cost really low but the cost would be really high if we have a a, a, a slow speed and a fast. This should be cost per kg. Sorry about that. In, in levelized cost, it's the same business. You use this levelized cost is the upfront cost divided by the present value of the quantity. You've got to use that. You've got to use the real 
discount rate when you discount the quantity and then you can go through and prove it it works with a project finance model and then we have the cost of the, the compression if you have to compress the hydrogen to get it to the to the dispensers and all that but these costs are not that high basically you add a couple of points to if it, if it was 50 before the efficiency in kwh per kg maybe 52 or something like that and you just get totally comfortable with some of this stuff and don't get all worked up in the dispenser even you can do that dispensers are a big cost here's my argon friends who, who who talked about that and and here's some of the costs and and all of this and then you go through and in that spreadsheet it depends on if you'd sit that dispenser out and use it for two trucks and it would hardly ever be used that capital cost of that dispenser is going to be as much as the cost of the truck itself it's going to be ridiculous but if you can do it where people are filling up their, their stations, uh, filling up continually, you get a lower cost, and then you have to decide which kind you buy. So there's some sensitivity, but maybe that's not so much. So, you know, this issue that, ah, oh, these, these, these costs are going to explode, that's kind of crazy. Okay, and now let's go to automobiles. Here's, here's our friend, your friend Elon Musk, who said it's mind-boggling, stupid. He said a, a fuel cell is a fuel cell or something like that, okay? And here's another kind of anti-video that said, ah, uh, the efficiency of hydrogen is bad because people, if they own a Tesla, if they spend 100,000 US dollars on a Tesla, they have their vested interest now. And if they own Tesla stock, they have to support it. You know, it's just a lot of vested interest. When I saw this diagram, I got very sad and depressed. I said, oh, no, hydrogen won't work because in hydrogen, you have the same source of power. We got to store the hydrogen, put it in the electrolyzer, dis distribute it, dispense it, get it in the car. And then we have another storage down here. And look at this beautiful battery vehicle. We have the, we have the sunlight and we just take the sunlight, store it. And in fact, this picture is an anti-battery picture when you really think about it. It's, it. The hydrogen looks a lot better because we can do two things. If we put our car in our garage, we got to take this solar power, distribute it, transmit it, and, and get it to the source. And if you, like everybody else, I went to my daughter's and I saw that in California, where they, they, they put their, they, they charge their cars at nighttime in their garage. That's what they do. And anybody tells me that there's a lot of solar at nighttime, even in California, I don't believe them. So they don't even use, use the solar power. If you did use the solar power, think of what you'd have to do. You drive to the desert, you'd park your car next to the solar plant, and you'd leave it there. You'd have to sit in your car and turn the car off, I guess, for four hours, and you'd get really pretty hot. Or, you know, what you could do is put it underneath one of these things. So that might work, but I went to California again, and nobody kind of does this. So uh, that's only part of it. And then to suppose that this storage is somehow equivalent to this storage is one of the most idiotic things you could possibly do. And to suggest that we should somehow store electricity with a battery and then put it in the electros electrolyze. I've got a whole bunch of other videos on that. That would be absolute idiocy, okay? So what here is a little analysis of storage. I said we need to store for 10 hours. We produce 10, 10, 10, 10. We get up to hour 10, then we take it out to <coughs> fill up our car maybe, okay? And if we uh, stored it, so we need, we, for this 10 hours of production at 10, we need 100 of a, a storage of kg. That's cost about 1,000. That's about 100,000. If we did it with a battery, we'd have to multiply our kg by 33.33. We'd multiply it by the cost of a battery, and we'd get 10 times as much cost. So this diagram says, ah, oh, this is a hell of a lot better than this. So it looks bad, but don't worry. Now we can go even further. So we, when we really compare our battery and our, 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 our uh, 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 hydrogen, it looks like I'm supporting hydrogen. I'm trying to be objective here. We, if we did have the same source, which we never really would, 
then we I, like I said before, we'd have to pay for this and this. So you to take the cost of this plus the cost of this versus the cost of this, and then off see how how different strategies we have to offset this efficiency. If you did, I'm going back. I'm not defending a, 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 a gray or blue hydrogen, but if we go to the gas scenario, and we can we can do the same game. We can say, well, here's the efficiency. That's what I kept on emphasizing. This efficiency, how many MMBTUs we need to get a kilogram, how many kilograms to get a kilometer. We multiply that out. This cancels out. I'm not an engineer, but I can cancel things out now. And we get the, the cost per MMBTU or the, the, the amount of MMBTUs we need to get a kilometer. And then we say, no, with it as electricity and you put it in your garage at night, then you, you, you're you going to run it through a heat rate, and the heat rate's going to take 7,000 BTUs to make a kilowatt hour or 7 mm BTUs to make a megawatt hour. And then you can do the same thing, multiply this out to get rid of the uh, 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 kilowatts, and then you get this efficiency. And look, <laughs> look, the, the gas, we use less gas, in 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 the in the SMR than we would use in a battery electric vehicle. Tell these people to shut up, okay? Or tell these people to make some basic calculations. I'm not defending it at all. And then we now, if we could buy solar from the grid, no, no I'm from from without paying the the the. Uh, 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 transmission and distribution, and we could pay pay something like two cents. Then the cost we can work through this, and the cost for our kilowatt hour, even if we had a lot more kilowatt hours, the cost for this 0.4 compared to the cost for the 0.188 would be dramatically different because of the realistic way you buy it. The cost is only eight for the fuel cell, and the cost for the battery electric is much, much more. We suddenly get a very different answer. So look, this diagram isn't so bad at all. And then, so so then, what I do finally is put the same sort of levelized cost analysis all the way down to the car, and it's that's almost the easiest part because you just go to the internet and you get the costs and you get the efficiencies and you get the capital cost and you can even get the operating costs, and uh, that's all we need. We put. We don't put taxes in. We don't make it a kind of corporate analysis. You do need the life. Okay, and I'll have another video where I'll go through this. But for now, I don't know if I, I didn't kind of show you where all these files are. Oh, shoot. In, in the renewable energy file, I've got a hydrogen section. And we first have the exercises and we have the kind of SMR exercise, and I, I, I tried a couple of those other exercises. Then we go through the SMR analysis, and I put the IEA reports and everything else. And then if you go to the electrolysis analysis, there's some more reports, and I show you where I get this stuff. And then, whoops, and then we go to the, the, the downstream analysis, and that's where I go through the various different costs and how you can really measure them. And oh no, I keep on going back and forth. Now I'm zipping this up. I got to give a new, I got to send a new kind of version of all this stuff out. And I'm putting this on the, most of this on the website without the articles. And then we get to the vehicles. And I realize that I put the vehicles somewhere else. I hope I did this. And, uh, Oh, there's some homework I'm doing. Uh, LCOE. Oh, shoot. Uh, uh, well, I'm going to show you my old one. I'm not going to waste your time, and I'm not going to turn the thing on and off. So then if I, I you know, if I press Control-Tab because I have the generic macros open, that works. Uh, 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 where am I? Here we are. We go through and go to the Internet and find all these costs. And then we understand that with anything, we get the total miles we're, we're driving. And this time, I just have the electricity versus the, the, the uh, 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 battery. And I didn't put all the fuel cell vehicles in because we have to figure out which one it is. But we put all the efficiencies in, and we get the 
up here we got the total cost. We probably should put the cost in my revised one, but I couldn't find just now. I put the cost per 100 k uh, kilometer. So you can get that, and I'm going to put all of that stuff on the website, and then we get the total cost of operation. And of course, it depends on which kind of car you're going to compare. I compare to Nissan Sentra and a Nissan Leaf for this one, but then do we compare a Tesla 3 to a Toyota Mirai? And we get, depending on what kind of costs of hydrogen we have, and depending on what kind of lifetime we assume, and depending on the capital cost, we get a very different answer. And here's a different one where the, the, the I think I had, I put a higher uh, cost of hydrogen in and uh, about a longer battery life. So in this case, the this one was higher than this one, right? There's the cost of ownership. So it depends on the life, depends on how much you drive, depends on which is like the load factor and all that. And then I've got some more and let me just finish this up. Then for heavy vehicles, the analysis would be almost the same. And, and uh, uh, here's some data. Here's this idiotic Deloitte thing that kind of had the costs of a fuel cell being dramatically more for a bus than another one. We have to understand the source. Why is it really so much higher for a fuel cell here than a battery electricity vehicle? Is this an inherent cost disadvantage? Because when we measure the cost of a fuel cell, if you're really paying, for the fuel cell, this this extremely high price, then it would be enough of that. Now let's go all the way to ammonia, and then we'll include the kind of the the in, in ammonia. That's the what is it? N nitrogen in air. There's a lot of nitrogen in air, right? Nitrogen. So we have to separate the nitrogen out and get the hydrogen, and it, it's NH3. Okay, and then we can use that nitrogen to. To make a ship go, we can use that nitrogen. I, I mean, the, the ammonia. We're going to make ammonia. We got it. Once we do this, we compress it, and then we have to spend some more money to put it together, and then we get that. Okay, and then we can use these other systems. And this is where I worked on a, a, a little bit of this analysis, where we get the electrolysis for 2.13. The the cost of the air separation is very little. The cost of the whole or uh, whatever ammonia is about four or five hundred or six hundred, depending on what the gas price is or the electricity price. So that's not much. The cost of the compression is tiny, and then we have to put it in one of these whatever Hubber Bosch, whatever in the heck that's called. The biggest cost here is the hydrogen cost, and we get our levelized cost, and we can kind of summarize it. Now, the most idiotic thing you could do here is try to make a project finance model, which I wasted my time to try to prove that it all works. And on the disk, uh, uh, you can you can get all the the uh, uh, whatever. It's in one of those folders. I've I've lost it now. Okay, so so that's enough. All right, and then uh, I try to then look at what the cost of of, of nitrogen is and relate that to the natural gas price. And you can see, of course, it's going to be very, very uh, uh, related. This is this is a natural gas index price. Spot prices are very different. It's hard to get really some good data, apparently, on the natural gas price. But we could try to figure out <laughs> when is it efficient in the Middle East to make our electrolysis and transport it. And here are the kind of transport costs because my friend uh, gave me a lot of the data and then I've got some other junk here at the, at the bottom. Okay, what could happen? And that's enough and I'm going to stop uh,